remember yourself. By letting it all be equal and even, by not engaging any further in the energy of changing and altering and fixing, by letting go of that whole responsibility that you have to fix and change yourself all the time, you will most rapidly change yourself. The moment that we think that something is real, the moment we think it is real, we can't detach from it. We can't look at it objectively anymore. We can't relax with it. We can't accept it. We have to either acquire it or we have to avoid it or reject it or we have to fix it. So anything in your life that you assume is solid and real and really, really out there, as if it exists outside of your perception, First of all, it's a mistake in perception because that's not what's actually going on. All things are happening inside of your soul, inside of your awareness. Your body exists inside of your soul awareness. Your soul doesn't exist inside of your body. Your awareness doesn't exist inside of your body. Your soul awareness is the sphere-like container. It's the space which right now witnesses your physical body. You are that soul consciousness observing your mind and your body. You're looking from the outside in already, you see. And the moment that you reverse that, which most people have, where you think things are outside of yourself and they're real, now it becomes difficult to really rest with them, to really just settle into instant purity, instant freedom, instant not changing anything about it, just letting it liberate itself through your change in perception. That's all, you're not doing anything. You're just allowing it to be changed in your perception and voila, the whole thing feels different. The problem is gone. The light is there. The energy flows. You feel happy. You feel good. You feel wise. Not just happy, go lucky, like hippie. No, present, grounded, skillful, wise, perfect timing, knowing exactly what to do, how to do, when to do it, even though you feel like you're not doing a single thing. You're just enjoying the life stream of God itself by not changing anything. The moment you try to change it, again, remember, the moment you try to enter your perception, enter your world, enter this canvas, enter your painting, and try to change something about it, you are exiting your enlightened state every time you do that. You do that. You are enlightened by nature. You're not ever going to get there with your non-nature. You have to eliminate your assumptions. Settle down. Allow God to enlighten you. Don't try it yourself. It's a painful, long-ass journey. Don't do it. Another tool that can kind of help you with this, so just uh, settle into this natural, liberated state. If you see everything as a thought, it's easier. Even if you don't believe it yet, that's okay. I'm telling you, it is a thought. Everything is a thought. There is no actual matter at the end of the day. In the final analysis, seeing through the whole illusion, it is truly realizing and you can come to this naturally over time, and it will deepen, and it will deepen, and it will deepen, that what appear to be things, material things, the laws of physics, the objects in the room, your body, the chemical reactions, these are a type of thought in the sense that they exist as thought forms, as intentions, as ideas within the supreme intelligence of intelligence itself, consciousness, the one infinite creator awake to itself. You don't have to believe this. I know it doesn't feel like that when you bump your toe into a rock. It feels like, fuck, this rock is real and that hurts and I don't like it. And I gotta be more careful about this physical rock next time. I gotta devise a plan about this rock. I'm gonna have to move this rock soon, make sure it doesn't happen again. And you get into that focal mind. What if when you hit that rock, you maintained the unchanging awareness, the uninvolved state, the absolutely irresponsible state? And don't worry, you'll be more responsible than you ever were before. Your integrity is going to be optimized. But it is like the most irresponsible state ever, at least in human definitions, because you give up all of it. You give up ownership, fixing, changing, all of it. 
and you feel, almost feel bad about how good it feels to be absolutely irresponsible. But it feels so good and true that you can't question it, that you're like, holy crap, this is it. I just got to stop changing things. And then you will change things. That will happen, you see, faster than before because you're not in it. You can't change a thing that you're in. Yes, you got to own it, but the best way to own it is to disown it, to de-identify from it, to see it's not what you are. Only then can you play with it. Only then can you let it go and flow and transform. Just like a relationship, only if you allow for that freedom can there be love. But if you're attached to it, you're in it. How can you love something that you're in, that you're dependent on, that you're tied to? That if they do this, oh my God, they're doing it to you too. And if they do that, oh my God, they're doing it to you too. In the freedom, there can be love. You cannot love something you're attached to or identified with, ever. It's just natural metaphysics. It's a law. Similarly, you cannot change or take true ownership and integrity about the components of your life by trying to fix them and believing that you're tied to them. Your well-being needs to be taken away from that whole thing. Like air out of a balloon. Pop. Back into whole space. It was in here. The air in the balloon was here. Compressed, tight, dense, little bubble. You pop the balloon. That sense of responsibility disappeared. And now you had the whole overview. And from that well-being, you had no problem caressing the cactus. But as the balloon, oh my God. How am I going to own this part of my life? How am I going to change that? So you become the whole by simply resting in a natural state without opinion, without anticipation, and by seeing everything as a thought, even if you don't believe in it yet. That means take the thing that you have trouble with, like something that you haven't forgiven yet or gotten past or that you're struggling with or you're preparing for it, some important presentation next week that will determine a lot of things in your life or so you believe. Something with a lot of charge or tension that you know you've identified that, you've defined that as a real thing, that real rock that's over there. Did you as a real body need to be really aware of, careful for, plan for, avoid, reject, or acquire at all costs? Might not be that extreme, but take something in your life, some component, some idea, some relationship, some opportunity that resembles that state of charge, that state of, okay, this is real. Sure, when I'm reading my book, I can stop for a minute and not want anything from anything and not fix even a single thought and therefore awaken to the natural state of pure awareness, naturally. I can do that, but I have this presentation coming up and I'm getting nervous for it and it's important for me and it's going to feed me and my family and it's a real thing try in that situation to redefine that, reframe that for yourself and simply call the whole thing, this is nothing but another thought appearing on the screen of my awareness. You don't have to believe it. Don't try to believe it. If you don't believe it, that's fine, but still define it in that way. Pretend for a moment as an imaginal exercise that this serious event in your life is nothing but another thought appearing in your awareness. Because if you can rest with a thought of this nature, that means you can rest with a thought. You can settle down at the root of the thought and not care about it. Just let that natural presence shine forth. If you've demonstrated to yourself that you can do that with thought A, then there is no reason you can't do it with thought B. But it's more difficult to do it with reality B. Okay, so don't project reality B. Say, this reality B is actually nothing but, it's just like thought A. So let's call it thought B. And hey, look, there's thought C, trying to worry about whether it believes this exercise or not. Don't engage. Just witness. Settle down in the present. Don't change anything about anything, including the activity of changing, the habit of changing. And that wheel will unwind, but it doesn't have to. That's the beauty of this. It's instant liberation. When you get this paradox, when you get this little shift, and it's like a 
It's like a little flip in your mind. When you find this flip, or this switch, and you flip it, and you find this flip, when you find this switch and you flip it, you will notice an immediate, non-story, non-dual feel of perfection. It might be subtle, and for some it might be radical, like an explosion of bliss, like an uncontainable desire to shout off the rooftops that everything's been perfect all along and you never knew and nobody ever knows and they should pay attention. Or it can just be a subtle sense of ease, like a, a soothing background stream starts to trickle into your spine. And it's like, wait a second, this feels nice. You mean I'm not responsible for that thought form? Absolutely you're not. But what about, what about? I dare you to just rest with all these thoughts and to not turn them into new meaningful projects. Don't turn anything you see into a meaningful project. And you're going to find the deepest meaning you've ever found in not attributing any meaning to anything which you've only done out of personalized fear because you thought you were air caught up in a balloon and you feared the cactus that was approaching. So he tried with all your might to steer the air inside of this balloon in such a direction that it would play with the wind of the external forces so that ultimately when your time comes, it avoids this cactus. Be your own cactus. Pop the balloon. Now. Become part of the air, and as the wind just blow right through the cactus, it doesn't matter. You will find a deepest sense of well-being, which I would say is meaningful, that you've ever found in the absolute utter absence of meaning giving. If you can do that for two to five seconds, then you can do it for 20 to 50. When you can do it for 20 to 50, you don't need to do it for longer because you are awake. That's how simple, how direct it is. This realization will deepen in you. So it can be a soothing sense of ease and trust and confidence almost like you're laying down on this mountainous terrain that's just super stable, and you can feel that stability of the earth in your back. It can be a simple relaxation, or it can be a radical explosion of bliss, where you want to shout it off the rooftops and let everyone know that this is the thing that everyone's been looking for. And it's right here, staring you in the eyes, plain sight. It's your own undiluted awareness. 